Good evening to you, President Saleh. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And we really want to know how this coronavirus is beginning to move towards your area. Tell us, tell us how you have been hit. Well, undeniably, this coronavirus is uh, uh, a serious challenge to everybody, and Iraq is no exception. Perhaps in the case of Iraq is even more of a challenge. Our health infrastructure is not as developed as it should be. Uh, however, we have mobilized with the help of the United Nations and World Health Organization. Our health authorities have mobilized early on and have imposed stringent measures, including lockdowns, curfews, closing down borders, suspending air travels. These, I hope, have helped uh, delaying the curve or flattening the curve. And we are working hard. We have to be very vigilant, remain vigilant. Uh, and not to be complacent about it. But the impact, obviously, in terms of the economy, in terms of the uh, social uh, dynamics, has been quite huge. And the, um, the ramifications of this uh, disease is yet to be fully, fully understood, especially in countries like Iraq, because the challenges are huge. But so far, uh, I would say, I'm very proud of our health sector and health workers. I met a number of them today, young people who are really battling this. And this is an opportunity to say to them and to health workers across the world a big thank you because they are truly heroes who are trying to save lives. I met one doctor, young doctor today, who was telling me that he has not been to see his family for almost a month now. I mean, it is these stories of courage that uh, you know mm. brings out the best of societies in these difficult, challenging times. Pre President Baram Saleh, I mean, I remember very, very clearly after the invasion of Iraq in 2003, those pictures where we saw everything being looted after the invasion, including the hospitals. And we understand that, you know, with the years and decades of sanctions before that invasion, and, and now with the difficult mm -hmm. economy, as you say, you know, you really do have a stressed healthcare system. What is your kind of nightmare scenario? Because obviously you have this big outbreak in neighboring Iran. You have an outbreak in neighboring Turkey. Mm -hmm. what, what do you fear might happen to Iraq? Perhaps because of our concerns about the limited capabilities of our health uh, infrastructure, we have gone into higher mobilization to enforce the curfews and the lockdowns and that and the closing down of the borders and limiting the movements of people between various cities and provinces. Uh, according to not just the Ministry of Health, according to the World Health Organization and others, these have been quite helpful. Uh, obviously something also very significant, Christian, this is the heart of the Islamic world. Uh, religious ceremonies have been mm -hmm. suspended. Friday prayers have been suspended. Uh, Ayatollah Sistani, the Grand Ayatollah, the uh, Marja uh, in Iraq, have come out with a very powerful statement that saying adhering to health regulations and directives is a religious duty. It is out of situations of crisis, and I don't want, again, don't want to underestimate the challenge, and I do not want to be complacent because we are still at the early stages of this terrible plague. Uh, but, you know, th the best in society, the best in your health workers, the best in your security services have come out really to overcome the limitations of your health infrastructure. And, and really some of the human stories that you're told about, I see, witness, is really just inspiring, truly inspiring. Mm. Uh, let me just ask you, because you mentioned the holy sites in Ayatollah Sistani, the grand Ayatollah who has so much weight within the Shiite community, not only in your country but around the world. Um, you might have heard um, that the Iran's, Iran's head of pilgrimages and Hajj has said that they want, Iran wants to start allowing visitors, pilgrims, to come to holy sites in Iraq, your country, in Syria, given the outbreak there in Iran. Are you going to allow that? Uh, this is a matter that the health ministry will be deciding. I was with the health minister today. Uh, I think the indications that we have to be extremely careful. We are not yet beyond the 
danger, and we have to really assess the situation based on facts and evidence before making any, any definitive judgment on this. Uh, there are lots of pressures on these, and I know that the supreme religious authorities in Najaf are keen to making sure that all the health directives are adhered to because, again, as stated, this is not only a health issue, they consider it a sacred religious duty, and this is the right thing to do. Um, can I ask you about numbers? I mean, you, you have praised your health uh, services and, and the measures you've taken. And according to Johns Hopkins, which tracks the worldwide figures, you, up until this week, have 78 reported deaths and just over 1,300 cases. That's the official figures. But, as you know, other news organizations have reported by talking to doctors and other hospitals in your country that those figures are much higher. And uh, Iraq has suspended the journalistic license for Reuters and fined them. I wonder what you think about that and whether you're not a little bit worried that when you start the cracking decision. down on truth tellers, you could have a situation like they had in China and things can just get out of control. This has to be based on transparency and openness. The numbers that we have from the uh, health authorities, the documented cases, we have 1,400 of confirmed infections. We have had 17, uh, 78 deaths, as you said, and we have had so far 766 recoveries. Uh, today was quite an interesting case uh, day. We have had no deaths. We have had uh, 44 recoveries and 22 infections. I want to assert that these are the documented cases. As WHO has said, uh, uh, unreported numbers or underreported cases uh, is uh, the norm in Iraq as well as in other countries because we have not been in a state of active surveillance uh, uh, early on. We have started that a while back. But the WHO has also confirmed there has been absolutely no evidence of deliberate falsification of records. You cannot hide the deaths. You cannot hide the numbers of people who are being treated in hospitals. As far as the suspension of the Reuters uh, license, it is a regrettable decision. This is a decision by the independent media commission, which is independent of the government. Uh, from my vantage point, you will not get me in a situation where I would defend that. Uh, I'm working together with our legal team in order to revoke that and manage the situation. I agree with you, this is uh, not uh, conducive to what we want to be, a transparent environment. People were distressed with the Reuters report because it implied a deliberate falsification of records by the government. WHO and United Nations agencies, mm -hmm. in their statement, they came out that was absolutely not the case. It's amazing to hear you as president of the country say that, and, and I I'm, I'm, thank you for looking into that because we're obviously concerned as truth tellers to get the truth out. So thank you for that, Mr. President. Um, the yeah, the sure, next thing course. I want to ask you is that you have, th 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 there is going to be a strategic review. Obviously, since the beginning of the year, there's been a lot of trouble between Iraq and the United States, starting with the assassination of the Iranian Rhodes leader in, on your territory, and then there was other action on your territory. And the whole relationship between the US and Iraq has become very fraught. What do you think is going to transpire. Will the Iraqi parliament, will the, you know, the, the powers that be decide that the US presence needs to leave? Or, or what, where do you think this, this situation is going? First and foremost, let me put things in proper context. This is really an uh, uniquely challenging times for a country like Iraq. We have a political crisis. We have had our government resign. Uh, for the last three months and we are trying to form a new government. We just appointed what people call the former head of intelligence or the head of intelligence of the country. But this gentleman that has just been appointed was a former journalist, a human rights activist, and is quite, quite uh, well known in the human rights uh, circles. So usually in the Middle East, you, when you talk about a former, a, a head of intelligence, it comes down with certain connotations. Mustafa al Kadimi is of a different uh, kind. I want to think of him as a journalist, as the thinker, as the human rights activist. 
One thing that's also very important about this whole process, Iraq is a country in profound transi transition and we have many, many problems that we deal with day in, day out. Uh, we have been put, trying to put this government uh, together, but we have stuck to the constitution and we have stuck to the parliamentary process. I'm hopeful this time we're gonna have a government very soon because there is almost uh, national consensus about it, as well as international and regional support for the appointment of Mr. Kadri. Uh, one of the big uh, issues before him will be in June to start the strategic dialogue with the United States. Uh, United States has been involved with Iraq uh, in a very active manner definitely since 2003. This relationship needs to be put in a proper context and in, in a proper way. We mm -hmm. have the strategic framework agreement that what we call. We need to elaborate on these, including the status of American and coalition forces that are present in Iraq. I am sure uh, by June, hopefully with the new government, we will have a very, very good conversation, a good dialogue that will be respective of Iraq's sovereignty. And let me come to this very important issue, Christian. If you go back 2003 to today, the pro probably the most important factor why Iraq has not been entirely stable, has not been entirely at peace with itself and at peace with its neighbors, is the lack of a strong sovereign state in Iraq. Mm. A state that is uh, able to affirm rule of law in the country and to conduct balanced relations with its neighbors as well as with the international community including the United States based on respect of its sovereignty. I hope this theme will be what will be the guiding principle for our dialogue. At the end of the day, our strategic partnership with the United States, with Europe, uh, with our neighbors are very important. This country has seen so much conflict yep. over the last 40 years. You referred to 2003 and the looting. I can tell you Iraq has been in a state of conflict since 1979, yep. sanctions, uh, genocide, uh, you name it. This country needs a reprieve. And I would dare say also, with Iraq stabilizing, my hope is that this will be a catalyst for a much better order in the Middle East. And you would know that better than most. Bahram Saleh, thank you so much indeed for joining us this evening. Thank you very much.